My name is Ed Frawley. My wife and I own Learburg, and I want to preface this video that's being put in our social media that this specific video came out of a course, an online course that we produced and that we sell on Learburg.com. The course has over 204 videos, over uh, 20 hours of videotape in this course. This video you're about to watch came out of the course titled Dealing with Dominant and Aggressive Dogs. So if you have an interest in learning about that, go to Learberg.com, go to our university section, and you can read detailed notes about what's in the course. You can see a complete outline of the course. If you have an aggressive dog, our course is going to help you fix your problem. If not fix it, it's going to teach you how to manage your dog's problem. So this is a good one. It comes from a, a woman who's concerned about her eight and a half month old Great Dane that's starting to show aggression towards strangers. I'll read it, then we'll talk about it. Hi Ed, looking for some advice. I have an eight and a half month old Great Dane who's just starting to get very territorial when it comes to men that he doesn't know. He's okay if I, buy, if I invite someone into my home He's also okay if we're away from home, his territory, but I live in a condo, and if we come across a man in the lobby, he's tried to bite two of them. I'm not sure where I went wrong, because he comes from a great pedigree. I've done a ton of obedience with him, so I'm worried and I'm confused. I am going to muzzle him from now on around our property, and... I'm currently looking for a house, so it won't be such a big issue. That says a lot. She's looking to buy a house for her dog, is kind of the way I'm reading it. Do you have any advice on how to deal with this problem? Do you think he's just going through a fear stage, or will he always be like this? And that's a tough question, I know. Is this something that should make me consider putting him down? Well, let me deal with that first. Number one, I don't know the dog. I don't know the circumstances on what happened with the dog. Given what I'm reading here, I wouldn't say it's time to put this dog to sleep yet. But I do think she's doing the right thing and looking for help. She should either do what we're going to say here or get some professional help with this dog because this dog's going to be big and... It can be easily big enough to overpower most women. So it's kind of a serious thing. I can't say exactly why this dog is doing it. Eight and a half months, that dog is starting to enter adolescence. So that's a tough stage for a lot of dogs. In my life, when I used to import selection-tested police service dogs back in the 80s, and a lot of them, I would buy a lot of dogs from Germany that were 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 months old because they are going through these crazy stages. stages. They're, like, they're like teenagers. Their hormones are flowing. There's a lot of things going on with them. And we don't know if that's the case with this. Or is it just a case of fear aggression based on something to do with the dog's genetics? She says it has a very good pedigree. That's fine. But in every breed of dogs, there's good dogs in the pedigree and there's dogs, not so good dogs in the pedigree. And usually pet owners are not sure what the good and the bad are. So I can't answer that. But I don't think she should put the dog to sleep over it. She can manage the dog better. She's doing the right thing. Put a muzzle on this dog. And... The question then comes down to what kind of behavioral training is she doing with the dog? Is she working with reward-based training? Is she working with engagement? Is she working with high-value food rewards? Usually, we're very careful about overly correcting a dog like this. If it is fear aggression, what you have to keep in the back of your mind is that if a dog is afraid, they're in the fight or flight syndrome. And if a dog gets back into what it thinks is a quarter and it thinks that it needs to fight, 
A dog that's afraid when it bites, it doesn't just usually go up and just nip a little bit. A dog that's afraid usually goes in 100%. I mean, they're scared to death, and when they fight, they go for it because they're afraid. So you gotta be a little bit careful here. You're better off to work on engagement training a lot, high value food rewards, and we have an excellent course on, on engagement training that we've done with Michael Ellis and with Florence Mickey. And you get the dog to be redirected. There needs to be a low level aversive that you would use. This doesn't mean use a prong collar and jerk them. A low level aversive that you can use that you'll start this out in the backyard, no distractions, where you want to get the dog's attention. He's not quite paying attention. You tap him on the button. Hey, 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 come on. He turns to you, you back away, and you give him high value food rewards. And you don't just give him one. You turn it into an interactive event where you give him one. This time, maybe next time you give him five. Or next time you give him three, and then you give him two. So you vary how many rewards you're going to give him. Turn it into event, an event so the dog stays engaged with you. You do this enough, and this isn't in a week. This isn't in two weeks. This is over a long period of time. You do it enough so that when you tap him on the butt, and say, hey, that it becomes a reflexive action for the dog to turn and say, you got something for me? I'll take that food. You don't wait until you're in the lobby with a the guy there and the dog's already light, lighting up on the guy. That's when it's kind of too late. But the dog should have a muzzle on. You can get muzzles that have an opening in the front, we sell them, that you can pass high value food rewards through to work on them. So you gradually get the dog so that it will turn and engage with you. Then you gradually, slowly add distractions. And the big distractions are strange men. So you have to control the environment that you take your dog in. Running into a guy in the lobby, you can't hardly control that. and You don't want to set it up for an accident. You don't want the dog to practice bad behavior because every time he practices it and he gets a reaction out of it, that, that bad behavior gets stronger and stronger and harder and harder to make it go away. So there's, I, there's things here to think about. There's things that she can do, but like I said twice already, I don't think it's time to put a dog to sleep just because it's doing this. That's all I got. <laughs>